Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Stand By Me from 1986. And this is the winner of my Patreon movie review vote. If you would like for me to review a movie of your choice, then click on the link below for my Patreon, become a patron, and then maybe I will be reviewing your movie next month. Stand By Me, I think, can get criticized for being too earnest or kind of too sappy or too nostalgic. And a lot of that might be because this was played on TBS incessantly throughout the 90s, so just picking up pieces from it, you could sort of just watch it and go, oh my god, this movie. And I sort of get that angle to it, but I think this film sort of has a deeper subtext within it. Now this very much feels like a movie that's all about acting and, you know, character and like kind of these big kind of sort of plays that are meant to sort of mean something. And sure, it definitely does that i'm not going to say it doesn't but i think it's actually fairly good at it uh, it's interesting this was based on a stephen king story the screenplay wasn't written by stephen king but he felt it was one of the more faithful adaptations and i think it does what often horror writers do is they take ideas and make them mean a lot more than you ordinarily would think they would on a surface level you know certainly it the clown represents more than just being like a scary clown christine represents more than just being a car so forth and so on or the shining represents more than just being a hotel stand by me takes on that and he takes kind of a similar idea this is about a lot of things their journey because this is the summer and the labor day in fact before they start school i believe for junior high which is a major transition for all of the kids involved and i think uh gordy will wheaton's character is going to start smarter classes and they know they're going to be separated and this is probably the end of their friendship in addition to that they're going to see a dead kid which not only the fact that they are all kids so you know that part probably hits a little close to home but also the fact that they're literally going to deal with mortality i mean they are literally on a journey to deal with growing older and mortality and death that is basically what this film is and it's very pretty clear about it i'm surprised you know when people go oh it's a darker film about childhood and i think it's a realistic film about childhood is when you start getting older and going into junior high you realize things are going to change that's probably one of the major transitions of life Corey felton even talks about how he turned 13 on the set of this film as did river phoenix and it was kind of a major transition towards like more kind of mature thinking for a lot of those kids that spirit runs throughout this film this idea of getting older and maturing that's certainly the idea of a bunch of kids in the 50s a band of outsiders or a losers club or something like that in a stephen king thing is something that he does quite a bit but i think this one has always been the one that most people like the most rob reiner who this was really kind of the point where people really started to take him more seriously as a director he had an insane filmography in the 80s in fact the only film i think of his that he made in the 80s from spinal tap to a few good men that isn't you know so enwrapped in the culture that we quoted all the time which is the sure thing which i actually haven't seen before this he made this is spinal tap which was a cult movie but didn't really break out but this is his first real financial hit after this he made the princess bride when harry met sally misery and then a few good men i've always found it fascinating this part of his filmography because the he really fell off after this i guess american president was sort of a comeback but and he had some decent films in the 90s but the the run he had is pretty remarkable all of those films are films i hear quoted all the time or see art from all all the time and if i reference you would instantly get except for the sure thing stand by me shows what was so good about him is he was really good with actors each of those films have amazing performances within them and he really worked well with the young cast now this is probably because he was an actor himself coming off of all in the family and various other roles but uh, mainly all in the family and norman lear actually helped pay for this movie himself after financing fell out because he believed in this film and believed in the script and believed in rob having a relationship with him from all in the family but more so than any of rob reiner's other films and maybe spine i think spinal tap does sort of as well but this film very much kind of in a more traditional sense feels like an actor turned director's type of movie it focuses more on acting being the showpiece of this thing it focuses on you know a team of people it really fine tunes the acting it's really about character this feels like a film that is about acting full stop and it's really good at it i think that's the one thing rob reiner was so good at understanding what 
was important about this film was that getting these four boys to have the relationship they do because you can understand how they're all different how they all have unique personalities which king was very smart about if you notice in all these groups each of these kids in this or in it have unique personalities so i can instantly go if someone refers to the losers club in it and says oh you know the one kid and they just do a brief description i instantly know who it is which shows how smart stephen king is about writing groups of people you really need that if you just go you know blonde guy number two and you're like are we counting number two from this way or that way which one is that and in this you know you know the difference between Corey feldman's character jerry o'connell's character and river phoenix's character and will wheaton's character they'll have distinct personalities ones like the brain ones like the chubbier lovable kid ones like kind of the angrier kind of kid with a rough home life river phoenix kind of similarly but more of like level-headed leader and so forth and i think rob reiner knew how to use that but he also got insanely lucky i mean these are four kids who all had very lengthy careers some of which probably gave still some of their best performances believe it or not but having river phoenix and it was originally the lead but they made it more about gordy which was kind of smart they changed the whole film to be really about him and i think that was a good move really and i like will wheaton it's one of my more favorite performances from him. I, I like him in star trek next generation but i think he does a good job of kind of getting kind of the spirit of it and being the mood of the whole film really he needs to establish through his performance but river phoenix it's almost like you have to understand that his performance is also through the rose tinted glasses of someone who's just lost a friend they haven't seen in 10 years who means a lot to their childhood so when you think of how like these broad kind of moments that the river phoenix character is doing is supposed to do that within the guys that this is playing on i think pauline kale said this was like a special episode of the waltons you kind of have to accept that it is like that but what i think what river phoenix does so well within this film is he gets who he is but he also gets that he's the leader i believe he was sort of an older brother and i think he really plays that kind of older brother kind of sense to it that sense of responsibility that sense of getting the group to work you know the other guys can be more emotional he can be emotional in spots but he has this weight of responsibility around him all also being very sensitive and vulnerable i understand through watching this i when i was a kid i couldn't see a lot of the other river phoenix movies but when i saw this i was like i understand why this guy's a great actor through watching this and um cory feldman i feel like gets maligned a lot partly because he's a little weird but also because of his later films and how it didn't work out for him exactly but i do really like him in this i think he had a great 80s better than most people but in terms of filmography at least and uh i think he he does the really sensitive over emoting kind of thing but he really gets into that kind Kind of a character he feels like he did a lot of sense work it, they did a ton of rehearsal and it really shows in this film that's probably why you have this like deep connection to them one thing i find that's really interesting about this film is when i was a kid it felt like a kid's film that really spoke to you it really broke down the barriers and wasn't being a kid's film it was like this is a kid's film about what it's like to be a kid it's almost like not a kid's film that parents would find appropriate to kids but is appropriate to kids because it appropriately captures what their lives are actually like but parents obviously don't really want to be faced with that reality jerry o'connell i do like in this it's sort of interesting obviously everyone goes he lost all the weight and all that stuff and that's neat but i think because it persona wise it is so radically different from who you see him as now you can still tell he's the same person but it does feel radically different also he really kind of changed himself not just physically but as an actor and i think he's really good at kind of the cute aw shucksness to it and also i always forget keither Sutherland's in this i'm always like a surprise keither cool and he's good at playing up the kind of bad boy image he definitely knows what he's doing but there are a lot of similarities between this and it in terms of the layout of this thing and certainly the use of nostalgia but i think it's sort of the point in this king often plays with like trauma and the trauma of the past and youth and things like that this almost both plays with like hey it sort of sucked being 12 but it was also really cool being 12 at the same time which i think his other works do but they kind of overload on how it sucked but also how great it was this seems to be more a level-headed kind of gray to it that i haven't really seen from him rob reiner was able to kind of tap into the humanity of this which is really you know if you don't get the humanity of this thing it won't work adrian line or line or whatever who had done Fatal Attraction and Nine and a Half Weeks was almost supposed to direct this and I'm so glad he didn't because Rob Reiner understands the real humanity to it and uh, certainly there's a lot of things like you could talk about the great dialogue you could talk about all these other things but I, I honestly think it's a real director movie but a directed movie when you're directing something that's n not as showy it's showy in terms of acting but it's not showy in terms of technical kind of directing which is sort of interesting this film was a, a hit actually but i think it became a bigger hit because of tbs and because it got played on tv incessantly which i think kind of added to it not being taken as seriously really and i know it got played in schools and like i saw it like four or five times at school on rainy days and so forth but i think it kind of grew to be a much bigger film on home video and so forth it's probably a way bigger 
bigger film than it was at the time, although it did get, like, some uh, awards consideration. It didn't get any Oscar stuff. Rob Reiner didn't have the best luck with that, unfortunately. It getting played so much kind of makes you disregard it a little. It's kind of interesting because a film like The Breakfast Club, which I really liked as a teenager, feels way too melodramatic for me to ever watch again. I feel like that was a film that, like, you know, I saw a lot when I was a teen, and it's like, I don't really need to see it again. Maybe I will at some point but and review it. But this is a film that kind of holds up better for me. I think the filmmaking works in that you can watch it as a kid, and it can mean something to you and be important, but you can watch it as an adult and still be able to appreciate it, even if it is kind of dipping too far into the earnestness and the nostalgia, which is certainly does, but there's something else there, oddly, that you can kind of appreciate, that you can kind of bite into and like. I find that very kind of palpable. I think that's probably why this film won't go away. I think this film stays consistently popular whether Stephen King is or not. It's almost like at the end, even though you know he it's based on one of his works, you kind of forget it is based on one of his works. That's probably why Rob Reiner could make another good Stephen King adaptation with Misery. It's like, it takes someone who has a lot of training as an actor to really understand like how to get that to work and give the amount of rehearsals and give him the backstory. And almost hearing about some of his direction while reading behind the scenes, it feels like he did what he needed to do to get the scene, but he didn't necessarily like go into them. He was very sensitive towards these kids and it felt like these kids had a world to create within, you know? And it's an interesting idea, I think, the story is these kids wanting to see a dead body because not only can you get into like kind of the big acting moralism that you'd probably want to with this, but you can also appreciate if you were a kid and someone's like, do you want to see a dead body? You'd be like, yeah, absolutely, totally. And so it works on this kind of very kid level, but it works on a more mature, kind of interesting intellectual level as well. Kind of a very externally, so <laughs> I don't think it's like, you know, let's calm down with the deepness on this shit a little. I think it does that pretty damn well, surprisingly better than most Hollywood films were at the time. I think that's why, like, when you talk about teen or tween movies, sometimes people forget about this because it feels like it's kind of its own thing, you know? I hear it compared to 400 Blows, I don't really want to go that far with this but I think I get why they're saying because it really captures youth so well it's kind of undeniable how well it captures kind of this time in your life and how you do feel like things are changing and you can't help it and maybe you're a little uncomfortable with it I think the transition between grade school and middle school is a pretty big one especially like back then because now there's like this whole tween thing and like things are marketed towards you and it was kind of weird because back at least when I was a kid which is the 90s around this age but these the 50s and I've heard it was worse then because you'll like you know want to talk about pop music and rock and roll and what's controversial and band books and all this stuff be also still and not that there's something wrong with that necessarily but there's that kind of view where you're like kind of this in-between state you're not sure where to go yet it kind of captures that really well because they're still doing kid games and he's still like singing things and doing the beaches of normandy thing and things like that but they're also like dealing with a pretty weighty thing at the same time which is a pretty tall order for any actor to be able to accomplish as well i think this and like welcome to the dollhouse are the only films i can really think of that really capture it in a way that's not just like trying to do a big kids movie and it's an interesting era for kids because it's one that you probably wouldn't want kids who are that age seeing like i've said before but it's it's you're capturing in such a way there's certain language in this that maybe won't be as appropriate now but i think it shows you how that era was and how reactionary they are and how much importance friendship has for them and all those things and i think stand by me gets that so well it's kind of one of rob reiner's many masterpieces of this era but i think it's the one that kind of set off the thing with rob reiner which was spinal tap's kind of a lark and in its own thing he never really made another film like spinal tap and again i haven't seen the sure thing this is the film that really launched him but it also like you kind of get the sense of him as a big actor's director you can see the guy who did harry met sally and obviously misery and if few good men and princess bride all coming throughout this you can almost find a through line there's certain times in directors early work where they play around a little bit more and then they have a success and then the auteurism sort of voice kind of sets and i feel that throughout rob reiner certainly that sort of fell apart and got not as good later on but at this point like this kind of shows you how smart he was at attacking a piece of material the idea of changing gordy to be the main character the idea of changing these things to make this film as rich as it was kind of shows you how he could really get into it like i think the script sounded like it was pretty much done and he still went around and thought about the script for a long time. I don't think that obviously worked out as well for him later on, but I will always hold this era of Rob Reiner is kind of like one of my favorite 
eras and of a filmography that I don't necessarily like the rest of. It's kind of interesting because I always will stand up for these films. And I think Stand By Me, yes, it is a little too much when you have these like kind of big acting things, but it kind of captures a time and captures a lot of like big moralism things so well that when you watch this film as a whole and not just like watch 20 minutes on TBS, you really get to the end and you're like, yeah, it's a little cheesy. I've seen this so many times. I know it's moves, but it's still definitely works and I understand why this launched Rob Reiner's career and I understand why they think they could play it so much because it will always go down smooth and easy and capture a time so perfectly. You really can't deny what it's doing and the time it's talking about and see how well it captures that, show you kind of that essential part of childhood that everyone kind of goes through but no one really says or talks about as much but this film suddenly nails so well that you kind of just walk away from it going like yeah I remember that time. You're being a little obvious about it, but you're obvious in a way that was actually right on. So if you've seen Stand By Me and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. So if you would like for me to review a movie of your choice, then click on the link below for my Patreon and pledge, and maybe I'll be reviewing your movie next month. Thank you very much for watching.